Ever since I was a teenager, I always described the FD RX-7 as my attainable dream car. This was the pinnacle for me, something that I couldn't afford, not then, but in time, with hard work, maybe someday. I would watch videos of them, anime, movies, and pretty soon everyone on YouTube was buying them. And finally, it was my turn to afford one. I bought it, the whole time saying to myself, this is my dream car, now I'm really going to be happy. And I guess it is. And sometimes I am. I mean, it's great. I love it. When I hop behind the wheel and just take it out for a drive, and don't consider the views or the likes or the horsepower or the other mods people might be installing on their cars, for that time, I feel genuinely satisfied. But I could just as easily be miserable. Because it's not Bridgeport. It's not a three-rotor. It's not LS or K or Hellcat swapped. It's not wide body. It isn't all-wheel drive. It doesn't even make a thousand horsepower. In the ocean of internet RX-7s from projects to renders and race cars, my car doesn't even register. And I mean, this internet YouTuber car thing is for entertainment. I can't really say the entertainment industry is bad, people need it. To a certain extent, it's necessary to make content that will drive views, and that's an outrageously competitive task these days. My commentary here is on the example that sets, and the climate that creates. There's an ongoing concern with unrealistic standards and body dysmorphia disorder. Seeing a genetically gifted and no doubt hardworking person in an Instagram post and criticizing yourself, a normal person, for not looking like that. That blame on yourself is irrational and misplaced. There's no reason for you to have body fat in the single digits if your job isn't a very specific type of fitness modeling. Likewise, the model doesn't deserve any blame. They worked very hard to achieve their physique. But unrealistic standards are hardly an issue unique to the human body. A quick scroll through the feed of most car enthusiasts will reveal an endless stream of outrageous high-budget builds. Race cars, SEMA builds, wide bodies and big turbos, engine and drivetrain swaps, custom paint and carbon fiber, superhuman lap times. Just like a beginner weightlifter watching a video of Klockoff tossing 200 kilograms around like a sack of flour, the gulf is just as great between a teenager who's scraping pennies together for an old blah eye and the thing that probably inspired them to buy it. But there's a key difference money. With the right work ethic and gym membership, you could achieve your goal physique in time. But if you want to own that Lambo, you're going to need at least a hundred grand. And once you get it, well, is it even turbo? There's always more money to be spent on cars, especially in the aftermarket. Not to mention effort, talent, and time. It's truly never ending. And from a certain perspective, this is alluring. A hobby with no defined ceiling. The ultimate space to express your creativity and vision or to display the depth of your wallet. But that means that if your reasoning for buying a car is to impress others, or harvest likes on social media, or build the fastest car, or to be like Adam LZ, or any other reason other than your own personal enjoyment of that car, you may wind up frustrated. It will be a Herculean task trying to match the minds and budgets behind a Singer Porsche, or keep up with an Alpha GTR. The guys in your Instagram feed will always be flexing the latest wide body kit or scraping their frame even harder than yours. It would be literally irresponsible for most of us to spend the kind of money it would take to be featured in Speed Hunters. So the solution is to what? Just be frustrated and unfulfilled for years until you can make that happen? And will you really be happy when you finally get people to acknowledge your build? Or when you at last have those car payments? So should you give up? Should you stop caring because you'll probably never really be the best? I think the first thing to remember is the most important thing in life will never be cars, or working out, or whatever hobby you might decide to take very seriously and invest in. Interests and goals may help you find an identity, but they should never define you. Anyone who thinks they've made it because they drive an Evo is one spun bearing away from feeling like a nobody. Second, the opinions of others, whether your friends, your rivals, or the people you only know by their usernames, also do not define you. Your drive to build a fast car can't be rooted in beating the other guy unless you know that when you win, you won't have anywhere to go. Even if you do build the car with the most drip or the SEMA car that breaks the internet for that day, remember that it's lonely at the top, and nowadays fame doesn't last. The timeline keeps you refreshing. You'll never be done if views are your definition of success. And sure, you can be the guy who never stops bragging about getting featured in Super Street back in 2014, but trust me, you don't want to be that guy. And you've got to understand that all these people that buy a new car every week or pump out these absurd builds, the ones you've heard of and talk about and see featured in every publication and on every YouTube channel, including us, they built these cars for you. 
As much as anyone might say, I did these mods because I wanted to, or I built the car the way I wanted, sure, but also they did it because the internet is a thing, and fame, notoriety, and sponsorship are all things. I routinely make decisions with my cars based on what I think will do well on social media, because social media is my job. Is it realistic or even ultimately satisfying to concern yourself with what will get the most likes, especially if no one is paying you for it? And all of this can be applied to any budget level of the automotive enthusiast landscape, whether you're lusting after your coworker Subaru, or you're pissed you didn't get on the pre-order list for the new Bugatti. I can browse the RX-7 Facebook pages and slowly slump into a depression over how I need to spend $1,800 on Ganador mirrors in order for my FD to be cool. I can watch Rob Dom build a custom everything for his four-rotor and shake my head. Yeah, it sure would be nice to have Rob Dom money. When I stare long enough at the expanse of content creators, tuners, builders, and other social media, I can start to wonder if I'll ever be content with what I have. Or I can unplug my router, throw my phone into the woods, and go for a drive in my car that I worked for and that I get to enjoy. A drive where suddenly all those other car people are nowhere to be found. And all that talk about how much better an LS engine would be, or a standalone ECU might be, seems strangely theoretical. Don't let your perception of how other people seem to enjoy their cars determine what will make you happy. For a second, forget that anyone else even cares about cars besides you. When you're under your car, or out on a drive, or chasing a lap time, maybe it's not for anyone but you. Cars won't make you happy if you find your identity in them. Cars won't make you happy if they're just an avenue to public recognition. Cars won't make you happy if they always have to run right or make the most horsepower, or even if they have to be shared with friends. I met a guy once out in the country who used to have an RX-7 and then sold it. And I asked him why, because he clearly missed it. No one around here has these kinds of cars, he said. It got lonely. And that makes sense. Many of us enjoy cars because of the communal aspect, in a healthy way. It's a way to spend time with friends and maybe even make new ones. But when those friends don't care about cars anymore, or move away, or don't have money, well, maybe cars just won't make you happy anymore. They're not magic. There's nothing supernatural about this hobby. Things change, circumstances change, people change. If your life sucks, cars aren't a cure-all. They won't fix everything. They won't solve all your problems. Even if you do everything right, even with the proper outlook, cars won't always make you happy. But sometimes, maybe even for a little bit, they can put a smile on your face. <laughs>